we all agree that uh, the climate is changing. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, an evidence. There's no point arguing this, and it has always changed. But uh, is do we live in a particular, in a special uh, climate uh, epoch or not? Or is it big changes or not? You know, I think one can safely say that there is no evidence for any discernible change in direction of climate. Uh, you always, you know, what do you have? You have a choice. It can stay the same, it can increase, it can decrease. You, it could be wind speed, it could be temperature, it could be humidity. Those are the only three choices. Uh, staying the same has zero probability because it's a very small part of the <laughs> domain. <laughs> zero. So it's going to be either going up or down. And as long as people are going to uh, give importance to the direction, regardless of the magnitude, so there'll be always something for the newspaper person to write, this is going down, this is going up. Uh, is there anything significant to that? I don't think so. And so is it uh, sensible to ask ourselves what is the, the, the driver of this change? If these changes no. are small, is there any scientific Abnormal. interest? Yeah, I don't think there's any reason. The most likely reason, and you know, we have that all the time, you know, we usually uh, attributed it to quasi-periodic uh, natural phenomena. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are words like Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, Pacific decadal oscillation. So we are talking about uh, uh, drivers of sure. small phenomena. So what could they be? Look, I'll give you an example. Traditionally, uh, meteorologists, oceanographers, when they encounter such phenomenon, usually are thinking, is there anything quasi-periodic about it? Uh, so you have the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, the Atlantic Multi-Decadal Oscillation. The truth is, these are not well-defined. But uh, the general impression is there's probably a natural origin for these. Today, if you see a change, uh, the thing you do is run to the newspaper and say, something is changing, we better mm -hmm. run for cover. Mm -hmm. uh, change in attitude. Uh, the system has always been ambiguous, but you, you took for granted that uh, it just fluctuated due to natural causes. And now there, there's a sense we have to find who to blame. <laughs> so, uh, apart from the, the, the standard uh, uh, theory promoted by the IPCC, we have several other possible explanations that are being uh, Well, remember, proposed. you're talking about explanations not for climate, for a single index, however poor it is. Yes. Okay, so you now have this single index. It varies hardly at all a degree in a century and a half. It is the product of averaging a huge array of variable things. It's almost zero. And we're going to take that one number and call it climate, whether it has anything to do with climate or not. If you're saying there are many theories for why it might change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> But, well, we, it is not only about temperature, but also uh, uh, glaciers, uh, ice sheets, Well, uh, yes, yes, yes. The, um, as I say, the glaciers have been retreating since 1800. Mm -hmm. so, so it pays... We have to find uh, something... Well, it's yeah, and it can't be CO2. Uh, it's not... Uh, what I say is, uh, apart from CO2, okay, uh, we put it aside. Yeah, I, How can we explain what hap uh, what's happening? And there are several uh, works on this. Uh, from uh, Svensmark, uh, from uh, near No, no, they're not about that. Uh, it's, it's about, uh, well, the, the uh, different kind no, of phenomenon. people have suggested phenomenon. different things that can change. Fine. 
and the most compelling of them, they skip. It's the system changes without any need. You know what turbulence is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a uh, tank of fluid and you heat it on one side and cool it on the other and it starts moving, right? And you think of the motions, well, if the tank were the size of this room, the motions might be on the order of an hour. Okay, that's fine. You understand that, you know, you, you differentially heat it and it moves and it's turbulent. Well, you take the earth. It's not the size of this room, it's not the size of this table, it's the size of the earth. And you get to the ocean, it's, it's not this deep. It can be eight kilometers deep, six kilometers deep. What do turbulent eddies look like in such a system, well, they begin to take longer because of the size mm -hmm. of the system. They begin to take years and decades, and for the deepest, even millennia. So once you have a turbulent system and it's big and it has a high density like water, then you're gonna have variability on all these time scales without anything forcing it. It's the whole notion that on these timescales you need something to force it, which is wrong. I mean, early in my career, I was mentioning, I was working on this 26-month cycle, and it's because the atmosphere above the tropics and the stratosphere doesn't uh, behave on an annual cycle, it doesn't behave on a semi-annual, at least not to a large extent. It behaves on a 26-month cycle. It goes east to west for a year, west to east for a year, and so on. Well, you know, when it was first discovered in the early 60s, oh, well, you had all sorts of suggestions. You had the solar people saying there must be some fifth harmonic of the sunspot cycle that's doing it. And you had even people suggesting, well, 26 months, that's the gestation period of an elephant. Of course, that must do it. <laughs> uh, you know? And it turns out it's the way the system behaves internally. You have convection, it sends waves up, the waves set up a relaxation oscillation, and that's that. So you, you, what you say is that we don't need any explanation. It's an explanation is always not, needed, but you don't need an external thing pushing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's uh, one of the most important things to understand is steady forcing. And for instance, for the Earth, one of the major forcings is the sun. But not the direct radiation of the sun. The fact that the sun is direct over the equator, roughly, mm -hmm and then barely skews the surface at the pole. So you have huge incoming radiation at the equator and almost nothing at the pole. So you have a differential heating. And that forces the system. It could be perfectly steady, but because it forces the system to become turbulent, the system begins to give you all sorts of time scales. <laughs>